on ESPN. It's the start of another big Monday. The second-ranked Duke Blue Devils arrive at Purcell Pavilion on the campus of Notre Dame to take on the Fighting Irish in a reunion of longtime friends, the coaches Mike Bray and Mike Krzyzewski. Bray spent eight years at Duke as an assistant to Coach K. Coach K in a familiar spot in first place in the ACC as Blue Devils tied with Virginia and Louisville, all 6-1 and one in conference. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another Big Monday. I'm Sean McDonough, along with Jay Billis, joined in just a moment by Allison Williams. Jay, a lot of times when we get into conference play, it gets a little more difficult. Not for the Duke freshmen, Zion Williamson and R.J. Barrett. They're getting better as the season goes along. It's really remarkable, Sean, that scoring load that R.J. Barrett and Zion Williamson are carrying for Duke. In ACC play, they are averaging together 49 points per game and Zion Williamson shooting 70% from the field in ACC games and RJ Barrett it seems like every time a player goes down he lifts his game and elevates his entire team but it can't be just those two because Notre Dame's going to pack it in play a lot of zone you're going to have to hit some shots over the top the leader of their defense for Duke is Trey Jones back in action on the weekend Allison Williams he returned against Georgia Tech and look that win wasn't the prettiest for Duke but certainly a welcome sight to have Jones back after missing the previous two games with that shoulder injury. Mike Krzyzewski said they kept him out in part to be cautious but also because of the pain he was experiencing in that shoulder and Trey told us that the first four minutes out there were tough. He was winded and feeling the effects of having been off for a few games but after that he settled right back in as did the Blue Devils. He is 100% wearing a little protection on this shoulder but that's it. Sean. Terrific defender against the Notre Dame team that has really struggled to score. Mike Bray's team hurt by injuries, depletions to the roster, but John Mooney has had a terrific year. It seems like the Notre Dame players haven't been able to play well all in the same game, but one guy that's consistently been good game in, game out has been John Mooney. Over the last six games, he's averaging 19 points, 14 rebounds. He had 19 rebounds against North Carolina. He's leading the ACC in rebounding fourth and offensive rebounds he has been truly outstanding and he's going to have to be outstanding in this one if Notre Dame wants to come away with a win he's averaging four and a half points per game for his career and under three and a half rebounds entering this season he's had a terrific junior year sellout crowd very cold and snowy outside today As a matter of fact they've already canceled school here on Wednesday the high temperature in South Bend on Wednesday is forecast to be 12 degrees below zero that's without the wind chill and if it is 12 below zero, it'll be the coldest day in recorded history here. Warm inside the building, great atmosphere. Duke won the tip and went off the hand of Trey Jones, and he barely ran it down along the end line. Notre Dame starting off in a 2-3 zone, and they are trying to keep this tight. Make Duke shoot over the top and then go grab a rebound. Four freshman starters. Reddish also a freshman. And the veteran Marquise Bolden, who's been playing with a sore toe an ingrown toenail that limited him to 11 minutes Saturday in the win against Georgia Tech there's the Notre Dame starting five young as well hub and Goodwin are freshmen and that's a three out of the corner for Trey Jones who's under 27 percent for the year and it's just his ninth made three of the season freshman from Apple Valley Minnesota he wasn't cold walking around outside today Well, it's amazing after a broken play like that an offensive rebound the ball moves and then you get a step in three Best time to shoot a three is after an offensive rebound Prentice hub off the mark from three-point range Notre Dame for the second consecutive game hosting a top five team in the country they got routed by Virginia here on Saturday. Cam Reddish, and that's a three, and a great start for Duke. One of the worst three-point shooting teams in the country, 31% for the year, but a couple of three balls right out of the gate. Well, Cam Reddish certainly not among the ones that really struggle from deep because he has been struggling of late, five of 24 from three in his last three ball games but when he gets open ones he shoots over 50 percent here's the offensive rebound picked up by Marquise Bolden the ball passed around and whenever there's an offensive rebound the defense is thinking about taking it the other way they're not thinking about playing more defense and you can get wide open threes that's exactly what Trey Jones got there Mooney junior 
from Orlando, Florida. Now T.J. Gibbs. Got a switch. Under five on the shot clock, a miss. But right there, Dane Goodwin, the freshman, highly recruited out of Upper Arlington, Ohio, just outside Columbus, with the first basket of the night for the Fighting Irish. Well, that should be able to calm Notre Dame down a little bit. Zion Williamson powered to the bucket, made it look easy as he went right by D.J. Harvey. How are you going to stop that? You're not. Such a, a, an explosive move to the right, then spins back to the left. And you're right, he made it look easy, but you had no chance to stop it. Williamson at 280 pounds, Double six team. foot seven. They doubled Mooney. Harvey's open for three. Mike Bray said we get a lot of good looks. We just haven't been making many, and that's an example of it right there. Yeah, they're not arguing with the shots their team are taking. Nobody's saying bad shot. They're getting the shots they want. They just have to make them. Cam Reddish, a wild runner, might have been deflected. Yeah, I think Goodwin got it. Notre Dame playing without its best defender, Rex Fluger, one of the team captains, injured his knee in their win against Purdue in December out for the year. And that's hurt them at the defensive end. Eight to two, Duke. Still number two in the country behind Tennessee in the poll just out. The top six did not change from last week in the poll that came out in the middle of today. Really a poor shot there by R.J. Barrett, trying to push it up quickly before Notre Dame can set the defense. And Duke does that so well. They've got four different guys that can just rip a rebound and go and take it on their own without having to find a point guard. That was not a good shot by Barrett. No offense run, just clanged it off the backboard. Another deep shot clock possession and another miss by D.J. Harvey. John Mooney claiming he got held by R.J. Barrett. Williamson inside off the feed from R.J. Barrett. Part of that was because T.J. Gibbs made a gamble, tried to take the ball the other way, shoot the gap. And that left his team playing five on four. A three long from Prentice Hub. Another freshman. He's out of Gonzaga High School in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. And many players have come to Notre Dame from the Washington, D.C. area. Williamson along two. And Duke very sharp to start the game. And Mike Bray is not going to wait for the media timeout, which would have come on the next whistle. Notre Dame just one out of seven from the floor is a 10 point early lead for Duke. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Continental Tire for what you do. Dude, are you? Zion Williamson averaging 22 points per game on the season, 25 in ACC play. What a terrific spin move. You throw it over the top, he lays it in, and if you go under a screen, which Notre Dame's trying to play tight and go under, stay in the lane, he just pulls up and hits that little pull-up jumper behind the screen by Cam Reddish. It's remarkable, Sean, the efficiency with which Zion Williamson plays. 70% from the field. And if he improves his perimeter shooting, and I think he can, how do you stop him? He'll make every shot. How do you stop him? Because you have to go. If he can make a three, you've got to go out and guard him. And I think if you give him space, he's even harder to guard off the dribble. I think you're better off crowding him. Because if you give him a couple of feet and lay off of him, he's going to be able to take up that space and go right around you. Mooney worked hard for that shot. It wouldn't drop. Williamson has scored the last six Duke points. Only his teammate, R.J. Barrett, scoring more points per game in the ACC. R.J.'s at 23.9. But Zion has taken this one over. Four for four. He's the only player in the country who's averaging more than 20 points per game while shooting better than 60% from the floor. Trey Jones, the layup. Great play by Javon Delorier. But going back to that move, by Zion Williamson being guarded in the low post by John Mooney. How much ground he covered. And he's so explosive, not just up in the air, but he's explosive laterally as well. 10 straight for Duke. 
Mike Bray had his team in here very early yesterday. They had an 8 a.m. practice. After that route at the hands of Virginia, he said it was really the first time all year. I was not pleased with the effort, and they did a lot of drills yesterday that emphasized effort. There you can see Williamson just covering so much ground to get to the basket so quickly. And you know, Duke right now defensively in their man-to-man, -man, they're out pressuring, but they're also switching every exchange and switching every screen. And you're going to have to slip some of these to try to punish them for switching. Wild turnover by Dane Goodwin, and then good hustle by Nate Leshesky, the freshman, to prevent another layup for Duke. I don't think that was going to be a layup. <laughs> <laughs> or a dunk. <laughs> well, this season, NCAA coaches and Infinity are taking a timeout to fight cancer with Infinity's $1 million donation to the American Cancer Society. In the spotlight tonight, the winningest coach of all time, Mike Krzyzewski. 1117 wins 1044 of them at Duke the rest during the first five years of his head coaching career at his alma mater that army Williamson 68% free throw shooter one out of two Allison Sean, the loosest coach in America, Mike Bray, not panicked with his team down double digits early during the timeout. He just told his guys multiple times, look, it is a long game. He did say offensively, though, they got to get back to using their cutters and movements and feeding the post. Well, they've struggled to score, and they're just struggling to hang on to the ball right now. Nicola Jogos just got off the bench, was stripped, did well to get it back. The shot clock did not reset, so it's at nine and ticking quickly for Notre Dame, which has gone more than four minutes without scoring and there is Gibbs with the long bucket four and a half minutes without points for the three by TJ Gibbs back into a 2-3 zone after the make they've been playing a lot of man because there haven't been a lot of makes but the difficulty of shot that Notre Dame is having to make right now is going to make it awfully difficult to put points on the board in a hurry and Reddish missed another three a corner three. Jogo That's wide pass. open is Mooney. Jogo tips it in. The junior from Hamilton, Ontario, seeing more minutes than he otherwise might have because of the injuries. When Gibbs was out against Boston College, he played 22 minutes and had six rebounds. Some really good, good play in that Boston College game from Jogo. That was their one conference win here against BC, a three-point victory for the Irish, and they played only six men in that game. They're the first team in Division One this year to win a game while playing only six players. Got the switch now. Bolden having to come out, but Mooney was being guarded by Barrett in the post. Goodwin might have wanted to get into Mooney, let him go to work on the smaller R.J. Barrett. Gibbs, nice move. The shot was missed. Good work by Lashesky to keep it alive. Mooney one on one on Jack White. Too strong off the glass. Notre Dame averaging 65 points per game in ACC play. That's 13th in the league. And as Coach Bray said to us this morning, Jay, you average in the 60s in this league, you're not going to win many. Well, they've only been in the 70s in league play against NC State. They lost 76 73, but. Uh, against a team like Duke, you're going to have to get at least into the 70s. This is an Infinity Timeout for the win. Learn more at infinitytimeout.com. And the only. A lot of people haven't seen Texas Tech. They're very good. They're very good defensively. And Jared Culver is an outstanding player. He's going to be a first round draft pick whenever he decides to come out. He's Duke with another three. Excellent penetration. And R.J. Barrett was ready to pull the trigger. We mentioned Duke for the year 31%. They've struggled against zone defenses this year. They're three out of five from beyond the arc. Now Alex O'Connell went up for the dunk. A little bit short, hit the front rim. And a foul call. Mike Bray didn't like it. They're going to get Jogo for a foul. Doug Sermon's the call. Kip Kissinger and Doug Shows, the other officials tonight. 
if Alex O'Connell had made this, that wouldn't have been called. The call was late, and I think uh, Doug Sermons was just waiting for the, the result, frankly, instead of calling it right away. If it was made, that wouldn't have been called. Well, there are some sermons that take a while. <laughs> Mooney back in. O'Connell missed the first free throw. And right now, Notre Dame, 3 of 15 from the field. And Duke has done a good job defensively. And with Trey Jones in the game, right now he's guarding TJ Gibbs. He does such a good job of pushing you further out on the floor with his pressure and making you think more about him than you're thinking about running the offense. Williamson up high guarding Gibbs, which is now on Dane Goodwin. John Mooney with under 11 minutes to go in the first half. Everything being switched, every exchange, every screen. Jogo with the shot clock down to four, got bumped down to the ground, and that rescued that possession for Notre Dame. And one of the reasons Duke can switch one through five is because Marquise Bolden is so good at moving his feet. And he's really come on since the holiday break. He's played some really good basketball in ACC play. Mooney can't get one to go. Ripped down by Williamson. Duke shooting 75% here in the half. Williamson stripped on the way up. Duke's ball with 24 to shoot. Mooney stayed low on that spin move. And rather than go up and try to block the shot, he decided to take a swipe at it down low. Probably a good decision on his part. And Notre Dame leaving that corner three open and Duke continues to connect from its left side. R.J. Barrett buries the three. You know, he scored you, in double figures in every game this year. If you want to keep your defense tight, you have got to give up some open shots. And Notre Dame hoping that Duke is going to continue to struggle from three, but Duke has not struggled at all in this one. Nate. Leszewski hit in the eye by Zion Williamson. First foul on Williamson. If you look at his response, that did not look intentional in any way, shape, or form. I don't know what he was doing, but the officials are, are almost obligated to go over and look at it. But the only thing that makes it look strange to me, Jay, is he, he didn't poke really anywhere near the ball. Yeah, the he ball was wasn't near it, but the ball but, he wasn't really all that close. But watch his reaction afterwards. Watch Zion's reaction. Like, he, he, you know, you can see in his face, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he was trying to do because you're right, he wasn't near the ball, but it looked unintentional to me, but I don't know how the referees are going to, you know, common, they're saying it's common foul. Leshevsky will come out. We talked to Mike Bray this morning about Zion Williamson. Mike Bray's been around a long time. 19 seasons at Notre Dame, 24 as a head coach, eight at Duke and his assistant before that. He said, I've never seen anyone like Zion Williams. I don't know who you'd even compare him to. Yeah, there, there's never been anybody like him to play basketball. Just at his size with explosiveness. And you have to, you have to say, look, he's not the best player. I've seen better players. But he is truly unique. Lots of chances at the rim and the finish by DJ Harvey. Sophomore, another one from the Washington, D.C. area, Bowie, Maryland, out of DeMatha, where Mike Bray played and coached for the legendary Morgan Wooten before Coach K hired him at Duke when Bray was 28 years old, right out of the high school ranks. And they've been very close ever since. Coach K told us, well, when you work for Morgan Wooten, even though it's the, the high school double, it's like coaching in college. I think that's true. And, and Mike Bray played for Morgan Wooten at DeMatha. He was a a teacher there and I think that's one of the reasons Mike Bray is such a great coach as he was a, a teacher for so many years. Good slip. And Mooney it looked like he got hit in another late whistle but it looked like the right call. Alex O'Connell bumped Mooney at the bucket. Rather than set the ball screen it was a run out ball screen. Mooney slips the screen. And by slipping it, his defender was behind him, and he's able to get all the way to the rim and draw Alex O'Connell over to try to stop it from the weak side. That was really well done by John Mooney. Terrific read. Averaging a double-double. One of six players in 
Major conference basketball doing that right now. He's the only one in the ACC. I don't know who would have said at the beginning of the year that John Mooney would be the top rebounder in the league and be so consistent with those six straight double doubles. And I mean, it's a really remarkable. I mean, look at this list of guys that are averaging a double double nationwide. Diedrich Lawson to be the Big 12 player of the year. Bruno Fernando's having a spectacular year at Maryland. Zylan Cheatham at Arizona State. He's had a triple double already this year. He puts it up in every category. And the best rebounder on the list is Jordan Murphy of Minnesota. He's already Minnesota's all time leader in rebounding, past Michael Thompson earlier this year, and just has double double after double double. There's a three for Prentice Hub, shooting just 25% from beyond the arc for the year. But Mike Bray told him, I want you to stay aggressive, keep taking the open shots when they're there. Notre Dame had scored seven in a row, but that has stopped very quickly. Williamson now with 11, has not missed a shot. Duke just running a little weave out top to get some movement, and when Zion Williamson gets the ball, he can just turn the corner and get downhill. And he just explodes to the basket. And even though you want to play a containment defense and not extend too far, he can take up that space and just get to the rim on you. Gibbs a miss. His shooting numbers way down this year relative to a year ago. Williamson, that's his first field goal miss, but Bolden there to drop it back in. And look how fast Duke got down the floor. Hub. A little too strong with the scoop. This is a 285-pound, 280-pound man at 6'7 with a 45-inch vertical and just brought the ball up like a point guard. He played point guard when he was younger and smaller when he only weighed like 260. <laughs> but he's, uh, he's a remarkable player. And a good passer, too. I think almost certainly the number one pick in the next NBA draft. Certainly falling that way, but I wouldn't discount... R.J. Barrett being right there is the number one pick as well. You wonder if in today's game, R.J. Barrett may be more valuable going down the uh, going down the stretch. When we come back, we'll listen in to the comments of Rex Fluter, injured Notre Dame captain, still very much an important part of this team. Let's go, baby. You ready? Have some fun tonight, Chris, baby. You too, Nate. Play free. Say hi, Michael. Say hi to the nation. I don't have any in my team, do I? I got you, brother. Feeling better every day. Defense, you got handles if you can keep it. Oh, nope. Yeah, you ain't got nothing. Yeah. Keep dominating. No bad words. Like, Duke's good. <laughs> Rex Fluger, what a character, great team leader. Saying hi to his mother, Rebecca. You see the pin on his shirt, the butterfly, one of his mom's favorite symbols. You might have heard by now, Rex ripped up his knee in December, the big win against Purdue, and then the same week his mom diagnosed with brain cancer, very much on the mind and in the heart of her son and all of us. We've met a lot of people in this job. We met Rebecca Fluger and Russell Rex's dad last year after a game that Notre Dame played at North Carolina. If there's a person more full of life than Rebecca Fluger, I don't know who it is. Well, she is a beautiful soul, and we are very honored and blessed to be able to call Rebecca and Russell good friends of ours and just a wonderful family. And just a heartbreaking, heartbreaking week for them when all that bad news was delivered. But Rebecca's got all of our all of our thoughts right now. Yes, she sure does. And ordinarily, they would be here. They were at just about every home game last year. Watching back in California, they raised a wonderful young man, too, in Rex. Older brother, Devin, played at USC. Held ball, Allison Williams. Hello. Well, Sean, what's amazed me is with all the difficulty that the Fluger family has gone through, Rex has been so incredibly positive, and he attributes a lot of that to his mom. He said, I get my positive identity from her. He said, I just really have tried to focus on what's good, what I can be grateful for. He said, whenever I'm feeling down or, or upset, I just think about the great memories and the great things I've had in my life, and I draw my positivity from that and from his mom. But a great testament to this family with everything they've gone through, how positive Rex is. And guys, how well he's doing. He didn't even have that brace on earlier today at shoot-around. I couldn't believe how well he was moving around. 
team captain, academic, all ACC the last two years, and a team leader, really the glue guy, was leading the team in assists and steals. Good free throw shooter. And still trying to bring good energy despite the 14 point score. His team starting to find a little bit at the offensive end. Nate Leshesky, the freshman, highly recruited out of Northfield Mount Hermon in Massachusetts. The three long from Reddish, but he got poked back to him as we approach six minutes to go in the half. Notre Duke Dame. by 12. Notre Dame wants to stick with the game plan. Make Duke prove it from over the top. If they can keep knocking down shots, more power to them. But if you start extending and letting them get into the lane and get to the basket, then it's game over. R.J. Barrett has eight now. Duke's largest lead was 19. Came out of the gates ahead 17 to 2. Of course, two weeks ago in Big Monday, they led Syracuse 12 0. Trey Jones got hurt. Syracuse came back to win in overtime. Game that changed dramatically when Jones injured his shoulder. There's another three for Hub, and he pumps his fist. He's been waiting to find the range from three point land, really from anywhere. He came in for the season, shooting 29% overall and 25 and change from three. Little life in the crowd now as this young Notre Dame team tries to scratch back. Not only without Rex Fluger, but without Juwan Durham, the sophomore, one of the top shot blockers in the country, out with an injured ankle. They hope to get him back in the next week or so. Robbie Carmody, highly touted freshman, played two games, had shoulder surgery. He's out for the year. Gibbs the bucket and some concern now on the face of Coach K as the Irish on a 16 to 6 run. TJ Gibbs doing a terrific job of turning down a screen and then RJ Barrett, or excuse me, Zion Williamson knocking down a three from deep. They're going to count the bucket and it's a three for Williamson. Just his 11th of the year, he's a 27% three point shooter. They count the bucket, and then there was a foul underneath on Javin Delorier. His first. With all the talk about Duke not being able to shoot the ball, and they have really struggled from three. This has not been a struggle at all. They look like a proficient three-point shooting team. But all the shots they've taken have been in rhythm, and they haven't really been challenged. Good shot. Very tough shot. When you talk to the Notre Dame people, Jerry mentioned Gibbs' shooting percentage is down this year. Perhaps because they don't have some of the guys they had last year, like Farrell and Gebbin, Colson. He feels obligated to try to do more, and he's taking some bad shots. He has to take some tough ones. Uh, bad ones you don't want to take, but he's got to take tough ones because there aren't the kind of weapons, as you mentioned, that they had last year. But a good move by Bolden down low. Thought he got fouled. Dame students. Mm. <laughs> Did you have a Q&A with the Notre Dame students today? No, we had a Q&A at, uh, at Kentucky last week. I heard it went very well. It did go very well. There were no questions for Seth. They were interested in content. Is that because you took all the questions, regardless of who they were directed for? No, they asked them all of me. Mm. Speaking of Kentucky, you'll see them on Super Tuesday. That's tomorrow. Some great rivalry games, Kansas and Texas and Austin. Jay will be there for that. And then Kentucky and Vandy at Historic Memorial Gymnasium. Do they still uh, have the benches on oh, the Oh, yeah. End? They absolutely do. It's one of the really interesting and cool things in college basketball, the benches on the baseline at uh, Memorial and Vandy. Boy, Mooney really struggling to score. Good hands by Hub. Jones got it back. Reddish swooping to the bucket and there to jam it. Marquise Bolden. So that toe that was bothering him Saturday and limited his minutes seems to be all right tonight. He's Super Tuesday, by the way, Jay, presented by Boost Mobile. We always make sure we get the sponsor in because that's how you get paid. <laughs> and it's a lot of money. Good win. I didn't mean to interrupt you, though. Now I feel like the questions on Saturday. I can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> R.J. Barrett, the pull-up boy. Has he been smooth again tonight? I mean, he's, he's averaging 24 a game and overshadowed by his teammate. Well, his game is built for the NBA. It's built for any level, mm -hmm. but 
It's really built for the NBA. I mean, he can grab a rebound. He's a very good rebounder. Offensive foul on TJ Gibbs. But, you know, Barrett is such a good handler and an excellent passer, played point guard. Whenever Trey Jones has been out, it's really been R.J. Barrett's job to handle the point. And he did it in Canada when Jones and Cam Reddish were out. He handled the point. And in the games this year when, you know, Cam Reddish was out and uh, against Syracuse and Trey Jones got injured in that game and then in the second half against Florida State, he's really able to elevate his game uh, like very few players can. And right on cue, he fired an air ball. <laughs> It's a 9 nothing Duke run. Mooney again. Good luck. Couldn't finish. He's having a really tough time of it. Only two points, and they were from the free throw line. He's 0 for 7 now from the floor. And you, could, you can feel that Notre Dame, especially with so many young guys, that when they struggle to score, it really affects their defense and frustrates them. With an older team, you might be able to have a little where it didn't affect you as much but you know they say you know, offense affects your defense and the mature teams it doesn't but man when you're young and you're not able to get the ball to go through the net you know, it really takes it out of your defense and makes it much more difficult to get stops Rex Fluger and Mike Bray are gonna have to work hard to keep the spirits high at the half 2-12 away Notre Dame one and six in conference play that is tied for last they were picking ninth in the preseason poll with this young team Hubs had a very nice first half only a total of 15 points in the last three games for hub just a double screen up top and hub did a really nice job Duke's jumping out the guy guarding the first screener jumps out and switches out and tries to, to keep you from being able to get to the other side. And Zion Williamson was the guy that jumped out, and they just switched how they were playing it on that last possession. And Javin Delorier now on the ball, but Hub took advantage of it, got all the way to the rim. And the Gibbs hit the deck, and apparently R.J. Barrett knocked him down. Now watch Hub right here, and stop it right here. As soon as, as, soon as Zion Williamson jumps out here to switch, you see Hub can just take it all the way and there's nobody there. And you can't, if you, if Trey Jones was gonna jump in and stop, then all of a sudden he's given up a wide open three. And so Notre Dame, it was a well-designed play, but because the switch was not well executed and you didn't wall off, you instead you try, you almost tried to ice it, that allowed him to shoot that gap and get all the way to the rim. C.J. Gibbs getting a bandage from Notre Dame legend Skip Meyer in his 40th year here at Notre Dame and another one of the all-time good guys. Feels like 50 years because many of those were with Richard Digger Phelps. <laughs> <laughs> They're like dog years. <laughs> Who is here tonight? Notre Dame and college basketball legend. Front end of the one and one miss. There's Digger. Who was the all-time winningest coach at Notre Dame until Mike Bray passed him a year ago. Javin Delorier, the bucket. Beautiful drive by Zion Williamson. Again, showing what a good passer he is. Duke against a team that likes to control tempo in Notre Dame. And to put up almost 50 in the first half. With a minute to go till halftime. 15 already for Williamson. Excellent defense. He blocked the shot of Hub. Two seconds to shoot. Gibbs had it stripped. Believed by Reddish. R.J. Barrett. And it's a held ball. As he went down the lane, the ball will go over to Notre Dame on the arrow. Zion Williamson guarding Prentice Hub. Left-handed. They're both left-handed, but Hub much smaller, not able to get past. And look how he's able to move his feet and get off of his feet so quickly to block that shot. And then at the other end, a little crossover and a terrific pass to the cutting Javin Delorier. That's one of the reasons Delorier is shooting 82% from the field to get shots like that. A 
Sean, when Duke shoots the ball this well, you wonder how, how you beat him. Mm -hmm. You really have to rely on making them shoot it, you know, shoot jump shots. But if they're going to knock them down at this rate, they become near unbeatable. Mooney finally has his first field goal. We'll take a 30-second timeout with 8.9 to go in the first half. Our women's Thursday night showcase. It's number two and number three, UConn and Louisville, to take on the third-ranked Cardinals. That's at 7 p.m. on ESPN, of course, on the ESPN app. You can watch it anywhere. The Huskies have won 17 in a row against Louisville, dating back to 1993. That's a terrific Louisville team. Of course, the Notre Dame women were number one. They lost at North Carolina yesterday. Well, Katie Lou Samuelson of UConn averaging about 19 a game, and Asia Durr, an excellent player for Louisville. I'm, the, the player I can't wait to watch is Nafisa Collier. I mean, she's averaging 18 points over 10 rebounds and shooting like 58% from the field. What a block by Jogo. Jogo. Jogo had an active half, but it was Williamson who controlled the proceedings. Notre Dame facing its largest halftime deficit of the season. Williamson with 15 and Barrett with 10 and Duke shot 58% for the half including five out of nine from three 46 28 Duke leading Notre Dame at halftime now let's send you to Adnan in the studio the halftime report all right Sean thank you Jeep half to report with RJ Barrett outstanding again in the first half of this one and Duke leads Notre Dame 46 28 they started the game on a 17 to 2 run. They closed the half on a 14 to 5 run. Jay, time to take a look at who's cool under pressure. Bought to us by, uh, brought to us by, I was going to say, Bosch <laughs> windshield wipers. I was not so cool under pressure reading the card. Well, everybody that has shot the ball from three for Duke has been cool under pressure. Duke came into this game struggling from the three point line, but five of nine from three in that first half. That's over 55%. Duke shooting 59% from the field in that first half and you can see the season has not been kind shooting from beyond the arc but here in South Bend it has been open season and Duke shooting the ball very well and playing really great offense and really good defense moment ago Allison with Mike Bray coach Bray down 18 what do you tell your guys you know we're competing our butts off we're trying uh, they are hard to deal with and it's been hard for us to score um, I think we got to drive it a little bit more and see if we can score a little bit here in the second half. But I, we're, we're swinging and scratching and clawing, and maybe we got a run in us here in the second half. Mike, thank you. Well, I'll tell you, after that ball was knocked away down low, Marquise Bolden got on the floor about as quick as any big guy can. And while we were talking about the three point shooting, he didn't participate in that. He's a big guy, but. He had a really good first half and has a has had a, an excellent ACC season. It's been a big factor for Duke in the first half. Marquise Bolden had eight points and six rebounds, three of those on the offensive end, and blocked a shot. Really been an impactful player. Last time we saw him on Big Monday in that loss to Syracuse, he had a double double. They had three players, Baird and Williamson, the others who had a double double against the Orange, still lost the game. In overtime, John Mooney, can he get it going? Any hopes of a comeback for Notre Dame would involve him. More active on the offensive end, T.J. Gibbs a miss. Good post up by Bolden down low. Williamson powered it up. Mooney thought it was clean. Kip Kissinger, the outside official, did not concur. Looked like there was contact up top. And the contact occurred right at or over the rim. Yeah, that was right on his arm. Is this the 94 feet with Jay Billis Jenks? Isn't John Mooney your guest tonight on uh, 94 feet? Yes, but I don't think this has uh, 94 feet have anything to do with it. Usually, guys that are on 94 feet, their teams win. They play great. Is there? Do you have the numbers to support that? I do. I can get them out for you. I'd be happy to. 
Yeah, this is actually the first time someone in 94 feet has been on a, a team that's been down double digits. Are you afraid now that you know, the others will refuse the honor of being on 94 feet in subsequent weeks? Uh, who, could, who could be worried about that? Y you know what was supposed to happen today was our guest on 94 feet was supposed to be Red Panda. But she could not make it in because, and she was going to do, she's stuck in Sioux Falls, South Dakota because of weather. Mm -hmm. And she was going to do 94 feet on her unicycle, seven feet up. Now, for those who don't know who Red Panda is. Who could is. not know who Red Panda is? That's impossible. Yeah, Red Panda is, uh, she does halftime shows all over the country mm -hmm. and is an acrobat of just fantastic on a unicycle. Nicola Jogo having one of his best games of the season. He's played with great energy at both ends of the floor. A number of different Notre Dame players have been thrown into more action and playing more minutes just because of all the injuries. And Jogo's one of them. What a catch. Mooney blocked the shot of Bolden. Rebounding from the 90 foot four, uh, four foot jinx. Gibbs the miss. Jogo kept it alive. Will the Red Panda get rescheduled? That's the most important thing I that certainly America hope wants so. to know. I mean, it'd be wonderful for her career. Now, you had come prepared with video. This is Red Panda. Mm -hmm. And she is a true superstar. When the crowd tonight here at Notre Dame was told at halftime that Red Panda could not make it, they began booing. Mm -hmm. They can dish it out here. We'll play on the... <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. Thank you. I was <laughs> trying to ignore it. <laughs> Wachewski the miss, then Mooney got shoved underneath the bucket. Fouls on Bolden. Does John Mooney know that he was not your first choice on 94 feet with Jay Billis? Yes, he was told. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was totally unfazed by it. What a, what a great kid. Mm. There's one field goal so far tonight. That so many different guys guarding it's been difficult to take a, get anything open. It gets doubled every time he gets into the post. Maybe he should try shooting while on a unicycle. Could they allow that? <laughs> well, what he needs to do is whenever he does get the ball, you know, he's never going to be more open than when he first catches it. Just go up with it and, and take the shot when you catch it. You know, catch it to shoot it. That's back-to-back -back fouls on Bolden, and now he has four. One away from fouling out. Mooney goes to the free throw line. And Javon Delorier is at the scorer's table to come in for Marquise Bolden. Here's Delorier Jr., one of the team captains, along with Jack White, fellow junior, and Delorier's roommate. It's always a great honor to be a team captain at a place like Duke with the history. All the great leaders they've had over the years. Both of those gentlemen talked about what a tremendous honor it was for them. And they put a lot on them. I mean, that's not ceremonial for Coach K. No, he no. expects those guys to lead. He was a captain in the Army, so captain means something. Trey Jones banks at home. Yeah, that young man is a ball player. He can impact a game without scoring like very few other players in the country. Duke brought a little pressure. They got it into Jogo. Trey Jones at seven points now and three out of four. Good back cut by Jogo. And he, Jones almost stole that pass up high. Hub lost it as he tried to go down the lane. Jones took it from him. Like Jones didn't give up the, on the play. As you mentioned, almost took it the first time, then came back and knocked it away again. He doesn't give up on the play. And look, I think he's the best overall defender in college basketball right now. He's not the type of guy that's going to get five, six steals a game or block shots, but he puts pressure on the ball. He plays his, his weak side defense is excellent. Uh, he's got a great sense for how to play the game. He's the best freshman defender Coach K has ever had. And Allison Williams and I talked to him this morning at the shoot around about defense. Was it somebody who coached along the way said, well, just always had the instincts and always worked hard at. Barrett makes a three. Trey said, when I was younger, I was smaller, but I was still playing up in age, frequently against 
kids a couple of years or more older than me, so if you wanted to stay on the court, you learned to defend. Yeah, that's part of it. And then I think his older brother, Tyus, having, having a, a point guard in his family at that high a level was certainly helpful. But, you know, there are a lot of guys that play up, a lot of guys that have, you know, brothers that play. But this young man's just got a, an aptitude for this game that very few people have. Nice shot by T.J. Gibbs. The shot clock running down. Barry lost it, wound up in the hands of Chris Doherty. Another Notre Dame freshman. The plan was for him to redshirt this year. But that plan, whoa, Williamson up near the top of the square, it seemed, to just rip that out of the air. Well, that looked like it hit the backboard, but what a spectacular block by Zion Williamson. But I, I thought it hit the, the backboard first and therefore would be goaltending. Hard to tell, but man, what a, a guy that can get up like that. Yeah, that hit the backboard first. That was missed by the referee. 60 feet away, I thought, thought I saw it, and it did. That was goaltending. I kind of hated always being classified as a dunker because you know, I feel like Coach K would just recruit me if he thought I was a dunker, but I guess people on the outside don't understand that. But, you know, I can't play for the people who trying to impress other people. I'm just playing to get better for myself and get better for my teammates and just, you know, try to make a run for, like, conference championships and uh, hopefully the national championship. Jay, I think he's proven he is much more than a dunker. I don't know who was classifying him as such. I know that his dunks have been leading the way on SportsCenter as they should. I mean, it's spectacular, but you know, he's a complete player. You know, one area where he needs to improve, and I think he will, is his perimeter shooting, becoming more consistent, becoming a more consistent free throw shooter. But you know, he is the he's the real deal in the complete package. Well, he and fellow freshman R.J. Barrett are the only pair of teammates in the country averaging 20 points per game plus a piece. That's not just freshmen. That's in any class. They're the only team in the country with two players averaging 20 or more. And they are probably both going to break the Duke freshman scoring record of 694 points in a season set last year by Marvin Bagley, who's now having a very nice rookie year with the Sacramento Kings. There's one other duo that's awfully close, though, for 2020, and that's Mike Dom and Dave Jenkins of uh, South Dakota State. Those guys are right there. Dom's averaging about 25 a game. Big guy that can really shoot it. We well, hope you'll keep us up to date on their progress each big Monday. Gibbs, ooh, tried to get it underneath to Leshevsky, who was open. Alex O'Connell in. And Cam Reddish goes out. 14 and a half to go. Duke 17 and 2 in command of this one. Mooney will never speak to Jay Billis again. <laughs> Get some good golf talk. We are told that it is going to air, despite the jinx. Eric Mosley, our fine producer, Doug Holmes, our director. And our outstanding ESPN ACC Big Monday crew. Trey Jones, a miss. Zion Williamson, and one. How about that second jump? Looked like he might have even mistimed the first one, but when he came down, he got that just quick dribble and back up again before anybody realized that he was going back up. That was so fast and powerful. Three fouls on Mooney. The free throw spins out. I was talking to John Shire, who's obviously an excellent player at Duke, and now on the coaching staff. He said, this is the most fun year that he's had coaching because this is a group that really likes each other. They play hard. They play together. They're very coachable. And he gave Zion Williamson the credit for that. He said he gets the bulk of the attention, but he's always so good about deflecting the attention giving credit to Barrett and Cam Reddish and everybody else on the team and it's not phony it's delivered very sincerely Hub lays it in Notre Dame scores off its defense 
So I think with Williamson, the spotlight finds him, but he doesn't necessarily seek it out, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. He does things that, that command the spotlight, but it's not like he has to have it and he's not, you know, he's not tolerant of others getting it. He wants to see his teammates do well. And I thought what was really interesting is he makes another just, I mean, how do you stop this guy? In the middle of his zone, he can operate so effortlessly and fluidly. But I thought what was really telling about his personality was in the second half of the game against Florida State after he had been out the, the whole half. Uh, you know, he's poked in the eye in the first half, had double vision, so he never played the rest of the game. Whoa! He blocks Mooney's shot. The ball stayed in bounds. It's like his fourth block. It's spectacular. It's almost like you don't have words anymore. It's spectacular play after spectacular play, and he makes it look almost routine. You know, John Mooney just doesn't have that happen very often. Nobody does. But when Cam Reddish knocked down that, that shot to win the game against Florida State, I don't think anybody celebrated any harder than Zion Williamson did. He wasn't worried about the fact, oh, I was out, I didn't play. And he's just totally into what his team was doing. Hub a little shake and bake and make the basket. And even though it's looking like it might be a one-sided loss tonight for Notre Dame, this is a big development for them. Prentice Hub emerging as an offensive force here tonight. Mike. Bray telling us before the game tonight he's certainly capable of it just hasn't been able to do it part of that could be he's coming back from an injury he missed all of last season in high school with a knee injury reddish a miss Leshesky got knocked down to the ground and it's a foul on Antonio Vrankovic a little crossover on Vrankovic and then the step back and you know, Prentice Hub has had some really good games this year. He had 18 points against North Carolina. He put 16 up against Boston College. It's just been this odd thing for Notre Dame where they haven't been able to get their top three guys playing well in the same game. Mm -hmm. You know, the only guy that's played well game to game has been John Mooney. Right. But when Mooney and Hub play well together, you know, T.J. Gibbs isn't there. Or Leshesky hasn't played as well. Or D.J. Harvey. You know, if Notre Dame could get everybody playing well offensively the same game, then, then all of a sudden you got a really good team. Mooney the bucket. You're going to have to do a lot of work here in the final 12 minutes. Well, actually, he's not going to do that much more work now to get to the double-doubles. He's up to uh, eight points and ten rebounds. He just needs one more basket to make it seven straight double-doubles. Trey Jones, he grew up a Duke fan. Long before his brother Tyus was at Duke, we asked him before the game today, why were you a Duke fan growing up in Minnesota? He said, well, everybody cheered against them around where I grew up, so that made me want to cheer for them. Well, coming up, America has to wait no longer. Jay Billis goes 94 feet with John Mooney. If you won't right talk to me, will you do 94 feet with I me? I will, I will. That would be great. 94 feet with Notre Dame's John Mooney. Now, you're from Orlando, Florida. Yes, sir. And you committed to Florida and Billy Donovan initially. How did that How did that happen? I did. So my sister went to Florida. She was actually the homecoming queen in, in 2011, so I was always up there. Um, but once Billy Donovan left, kind of opened up the recruitment and came here. So and then when, Coach, when Coach Bray called you, what, did he, what was your decision then? Uh, so Irish Catholic kid, he kind of pitched that, kind of pitched that to me. Uh, came up here and really just a no-brainer. Best thing about playing for Mike Bray, loosest coach in America, man. That's 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 true, and he keeps it loose all the time. And you're also a golfer. Now, what's a, what's six ten in a golf swing like? Oh man, uh, not good sometimes. <laughs> I can hit it pretty far, but it's it's all over the place. I can't relate to that. <laughs> Four feet. It's usually 94 yards right. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> It is harder to have a repeating swing when you're taller. You demonstrate that regularly. <laughs> <laughs> He's a dad was a fine golfer, played golf yes. at Spring Hill College. Mike Bray tells us uh, the dad, Kevin, plays a lot of golf. And so does John. But just uh, with that dunk, he now has another double double. I, I wanted a follow up question, though. That I'm sure Seth or Jay Will or Reese Davis probably would have thought to ask it. When he said, I went up to Florida a lot, he said, my sister was the homecoming queen. So I went up there a lot. 
Now, is it because she was there or specifically because she was the homecoming queen? No, she was, she, yeah, she was in school there. Because she probably had, I'm guessing, friends who were pleasant to be around. You know, Sean, I've only got 94 feet. I can't ask <laughs> all these follow-ups. But we you can, don't we can go you to stop and you talk. We can go to 188 feet if you want. <laughs> I just don't have that kind of time. 16 point game, 10 minutes to go. Cam Reddish off the mark from three. Williamson runs it down in the corner. Just so quick. And he never seems to get tired. You know, both he and Barrett play so hard. And you know, Barrett can operate in the middle of that zone. That's a tough pass there. But he's so good operating in that area right there. Very few players can operate in the middle of that zone, make a play. You know, that's one of the reasons Jim Beheim plays so much zone, is you're not going to find very many guys like Williamson or Barrett that play with such ease in the middle of the zone. 15 and 8 for Barrett. He had his third double double of his freshman season Saturday in the win against Georgia Tech at 24 and 11. Difficult pass by Jack White, but Barrett, you know, surrounded by four guys. A lot of guys don't do well in that kind of situation, but he is a, a unique playmaker. And I've said that, you know, he reminds you a little bit, not the way he shoots it, but a little bit of James Harden with the way that in transition he can get to the basket. He scores a ton of points. And when he starts making perimeter shots with more consistency, and I believe that he will, I think his shot is going to continue to get better. I mean, he's going to be a big time scorer. Reddish out of the corner. Yeah, Barrett entering tonight shooting 31% from three-point range. But Hub is such a good handler. Whips it to Harvey. Tough fadeaway, and he scores. Over Cam Reddish. DJ Harvey for the Irish. Hub is playing with so much confidence, making plays off the dribble, and I mean he's being guarded by Trey Jones. And Handled the pressure very well. And Mike Bray was praising Hub when we spoke earlier today for his assist to turnover ratio. 73 assists, just 33 turnovers, even though he hasn't scored as much as he'd like. He's done a good job protecting the ball, and that's one thing that Notre Dame has done for many, many years under Mike Bray and is doing again this year. They average fewer than 10 turnovers per game. I think there's a sign in the Notre Dame locker room that says, don't skip class, don't turn the ball over, and we'll get along just fine. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the words of Mike Bray. Mooney, oh boy. Well executed on out of bounds underneath. Might say you missed a gimme there. You, you, might, you might say, well, you did say that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's been a big theme here tonight. The U.S. Senior Open is coming to Notre Dame. They have a terrific course, the Warren course, here on the Notre Dame campus, and the 40th U.S. Senior Open will be here in late June. So they've had people coming out of the stands to attempt long putts. The Leprechaun, you tried a putt earlier today. Uh, David Toms, the defending U.S. Senior Open champion, was going to be here tonight, but couldn't make it due to the weather. I was the snow will have melted by late June. I was told he was duck hunting in Arkansas. Are you trying to say he ducked out of his command? I, I don't have. mean that. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> the weather was an excuse to stay on the duck hunting trip. I made it here. <laughs> <laughs> to the chagrin of many. <laughs> Seven minutes to go. Duke 17 and 2. Only losses in a thriller against Gonzaga in the championship game in Maui. And an overtime to Syracuse. They've won 12 of their last 13, three in a row since the loss to the Orange. Reddish after White kept it alive. Mm. Easy now. Mooney went down hard. And... I'm not sure that's the man you want to tangle with. Well, and there was nothing to it. Exactly right. I mean, he just went to block a shot. It's nothing intentional, just a little, it's a normal foul. Mooney just uh, frustrated more than anything. He got fouled on the arm. Also looked like he might have traveled. 
before he got hit. Timeout. Well, earlier this evening is a promotion for the U.S. Senior Open coming to Notre Dame in late June. Here's the leprechaun. He made it. And they gave away tickets to lucky fans. This was earlier today. This is 94 feet with no talent. That was a beautiful stroke. Hey, it goes in. That counts. It was a horrifyingly bad read by my caddy. Good footwork by the <laughs> caddy. That guy will caddy for you all summer long now. Heck yeah. That kind of Ronaldo-like footwork. Well, with you all the rules. Said when we play golf, if you're not cheating, you're only cheating yourself. <laughs> with all the rules changes in golf, that is now a legal play. Who knew the leprechaun could putt? Of course the leprechaun's going to make that putt at Notre Dame. One of the few highlights of the night, though, for the home team. Boy, Sean, Zion Williamson, 25 points, 9 rebounds, 10 of 12 from the field, 4 block shots in 24 minutes. That's not bad. Reddish for 3. And by the way, I think you're off the hook for the uh, jinx, because Mooney has now his 7th straight double-double. Yes. It is, uh, you know, it's unfortunate for Notre Dame. This will be the first loss for anyone taking a part in 94 feet. <laughs> Harvey a miss. Leshesky on the glass. Uh, Mike Bray, former Coach K assistant, referred to Leshesky today a couple of times as we thought him was Shashevsky. He, he, oh, is that right? Yes. Which made me think if. Nate Leshevsky married one of Coach K's daughters. She would be Mrs. Shashevsky Leshevsky. I hope you didn't spend too much time <laughs> contemplating that. Pause for long, awkward silence. Now Reddish at the free throw line. But Cam Reddish has a ton of talent. And he has a free throw. Leshevsky the foul, his second. The Capital One fan votes time for it. To vote, go to twitter.com backslash the sports center. Who would be your fourth number one seed? Uh, you know, Capital One apparently makes a lot of these decisions for us. And then they give you a pick. I mean, I guess that means everybody agrees. Do you agree? Everybody would agree. Tennessee, Duke, and UVA would be yes. number one seed. Okay. Yes. I, I, right now, I would put Michigan State in there, even though they lost. Uh, to Purdue on the road. I think they're the fourth best team, mm -hmm. and they certainly have a, a good enough resume to jump in there, but you can make a case. Kentucky's on the rise. I mean, Kentucky's getting better and better as each game goes by. And I'm telling you, Ty Tyler Hero is really a good player, and he's not just a shooter. He can, he can defend, he can put the ball on the deck. He adds a nice dimension to that team, and Ashton Hagens has changed that team completely. We're going to have to check with the folks at Capital One. I, I don't know if they want you influencing the fan vote like this every week, because people have so much appreciation for your knowledge that that'll probably sway the vote toward Michigan State. Marquise Bolden going to the line. Leshesky called for his third foul. Bolden finally healthy this year. You know, it's funny, when, when Duke played in Canada this summer, Marquise Bolden really struggled. If I remember the numbers right, he played 38 minutes in the three games and did not score. And in the last seven, eight games, he's been excellent. I think he's guarding Prentice Hub right now and stayed in front of him when he tried to make a move fast. Wild shot by Gibbs, but the ball winds up back with Notre Dame. At 4.42 to go. Super Tuesday. Tomorrow it's a doubleheader. Kansas and Texas in Austin. Jay will be there. And then the aforementioned seventh-ranked Kentucky Wildcats and Vanderbilt, Nashville. Both games live on the ESPN app. So you can watch anywhere. Super Tuesday still presented by Boost Mobile. Dane Goodwin for three. Well, that was a good pass by John Mooney and a really nice job by Goodwin to move without the ball and move into his vision. The last three games, Goodwin's been very good. Coming into this one, he's averaging 11 points, five of 10 from three in his last three. Barrett, the authoritative dunk. 
Goodwin, highly touted player. He's the player of the year in the state of Ohio last year. All-time leading score and rebounder at Upper Arlington. Mooney the bucket for the Irish. And Mike Bray gave Goodwin high praise when we spoke earlier today. He said it reminds him of Steve Vistoria, who was a fine player here at Notre Dame. Typically for his feel for the game, instincts. Vistoria having a nice professional career in Spain. He was a very good player, an important player, and some very good Notre Dame teams here in recent years. They're trying to burn as much of the clock as they can. They're not holding the ball, but just sort of waiting for the last portion of the clock to get something going. Shot clock expiring, and it wouldn't have counted even had the runner gone. R.J. Barrett can do it in transition. He can turn the corner and rise up the lefty with the slam. It's been all Duke. All right, adding in, as you know, right after TCU in Texas, Sports Center with Steve Levy and John Anderson. We'll take an inside look at the Warriors' 10-game win streak. This just in, they're good. Plus, Duke and Notre Dame post-game reaction and analysis. And Super Bowl opening night sights and sounds. Sports Center, 11 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Will you be attending the Super Bowl? I will be watching on television and enjoying it because I am a, I grew up in Los Angeles. I'm a huge Rams fan. Like sort of gave up on them when they moved to St. Louis, but now they're back in Los Angeles. I'm back on the bandwagon. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was a huge James Harris fan and Wendell Tyler and. I mean, all the way back to Jack Snow and Jack Youngblood. I love the Rams. Mm -hmm. Dave Elmendorf. Did you retain the loyalty when they went to St. Louis? No, I did not. I was a little mad. Are you torn at all? You are a, and I'm not, I'm being serious, you are a friend of Tom Brady. Yes, and it's, I'm a huge fan of his father's, too. Tom Sr. is one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. Tremendous. Uh, TV, the original. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I think... I think New England's going to win, but I am a, I did grow up a Rams fan, and I'm a huge fan of Sean McVay. How about that? He'd be the youngest coach to ever win a Super Bowl, and Bill Belichick would be the oldest, and mm -hmm. Alex O'Connell knocking down the three. If he can continue the way he, uh, to play the way he's been playing of late, he had a really good outing against Georgia Tech, and O'Connell played great in his minutes against Syracuse, but if he can be a consistent defender and three-point shooter he can add a, a different dimension a dimension to this Duke team TJ Gibbs the answer then a quick timeout call by Notre Dame Mike Bray the only former Duke assistant to have beat Mike Krzyzewski he's now going to go to five and eight against his former boss of course Bray spent eight years as an assistant with the Blue Devils in Durham and in his book keeping it loose. He talks extensively about his time with Duke and the influence of head coach Mike Krzyzewski. And that influence continued even after Bray came here to Notre Dame. In fact, after the 06-07 season, Bray reached out to Krzyzewski because he was at a crossroads. He didn't know if he wanted to stay here at Notre Dame. He said he called him up and Kay told him, you stay the course. You're a Notre Dame guy and I want you to do something. He said, I want you to go walk around campus for an hour. Just walk around and appreciate what you've got. Brake said, so I did. I walked around, I came back, and he was right, of course. I stayed the course, and thank God I did. It's okay, a very big influence in Bray's coaching life, even after he left Duke. We asked Coach K earlier today, what did you see in Mike Bray, 28-year-old high school assistant coach? He said, we were recruiting Danny Ferry up at DeMatha, and back in those days, the coaches go as often as they want. He said, I was probably there 15 times watching them at the practice and Morgan wouldn't let Mike Bray run a lot of the practices and he said you could just tell that he had a feel for the game and he had a feel for people and certainly coach K was right on both counts yeah Mike Bray is one of the truly outstanding coaches in the game and one of the best people and he was on coach K's staff for a number of years it seemed like they went to the final four every year back at that that point and then uh, right after the 95 season he went to Delaware did a great job in Newark Nick Jogo having one of the best nights of his Notre Dame career. 
Junior from Hamilton, Ontario. Well, Jogo's done some really nice things on the floor. He's played with great energy. And really one of the reasons Mike Bray was calling a timeout after the last bucket that they had was to, you know, he wants his team to, to stay in it and to feel feel good about themselves that they're they're working hard they're playing against the number two team in the country they're doing it shorthanded but he wants them to keep fighting and for the most part they've done that not not just in this game but overall their record doesn't reflect it but this team has stayed together and fought really hard Williamson push part of the influence of Mike Krzyzewski on Mike Bray the coaching staff you look at the bench and on Coach K's bench, you know, he's many recent years now had a staff full of Notre Dame guys. John Shire over there, Chris Carroll, Nolan Smith, Nate James, and of course uh, on Mike Bray's bench now, Ryan Ayers, a terrific player, Ryan Humphrey, Harold Swanigan, Eric Atkins. Coach K was telling us today, he just thinks it helps, especially as the head coach gets older, further removed from the college experience themselves. When you have guys on your staff who knows what who know what it's like to go to this particular university, especially places like these two that are, you know, strenuous academic institutions, you just think it helps. And I think it's a great point. And right now, Rod Bellanis, the great assistant for Mike Bray, is the only assistant on his staff that didn't play for him. Rod played at Georgia Tech for Bobby Cremens uh, and, and has done a fabulous job at Notre Dame. I'm actually surprised that he hasn't been snatched up to be a head coach because he's terrific. He's been with Mike throughout the 19-year run here at Notre Dame. Rankovic, rebound White. And good effort. And Antonio Rankovic will go to the free throw line. Well, coming in August, it's the ACC Network as ESPN and the ACC join forces. 15 universities, one network. Visit getaccn.com to learn more. A lot of people excited about that, including a lot of people in our business. I'm sure you've been getting phone calls from people who would like to work there and are wondering if we can help. And of course, you and I have no juice within the hallways <laughs> of ESPN. But Any recommendation that we make is turned down immediately. Certainly unlikely to help. Brankovic getting some playing time. His dad, Stoiko. Played five years in the NBA. Now president of the Croatian Basketball Federation. Antonio's from Zagreb, Croatia. It's supposed to be a beautiful part it of the world. It is absolutely beautiful. The Villas family is from Croatia. A small town called Gradac. And Antonio is very active on campus. President of the old Trinity Club. It's Final 10 seconds. Duke shoots 53% from three-point range, their best three-point shooting effort of the season. And friends of more than three decades wish each other well. Duke to 18 and two, and alone now at seven and one atop the ACC with Virginia and Louisville six and one. We'll see Louisville next Monday night on Big Monday at Virginia Tech. 83-61 the final. And another big night for Zion Williamson and R.J. Barrett. Notre Dame with the loss now one and seven. 26 points, nine rebounds for Williamson. Well, when this Duke team shoots it the way they did in this one, I don't know how you beat them. They are a very talented team and a very together team that can guard. But when they knock shots down at that level, they are tough to beat. R.J. Barrett at 17 points. Let's go to Allison with Zion Williamson. Thank you very much, Sean. Zion, you guys have now won four in a row. This one was never in doubt. What sort of mentality did you guys bring into the start of this game on the road? Defense and play harder. Why was that so important for you guys? Because uh, our defense leads our offense, and we were playing harder than the other team. Um, I mean, it makes the game easier. After a few games where offensively you guys struggled from deep, you shot over 50% as a team from three-point range. How key is that for this team? Um, it's very key, but, you know, if the shot's not falling, we're going to have to find other ways to score. So, I mean, thankfully our shot was falling tonight, so it opened up a lot of space for our scores. 
Whenever Duke goes on the road, there's always a big crowd. People come to see the Blue Devils. They come to see you. How much do you feel or feed off of the energy on the road or at home? Do you get the sense that all eyes are on you? Uh, I mean, that's what Duke is. Like, all eyes is always on us, and we love that energy. Awesome, Zion. Thanks. Thank you. Well, Allison talks about the readiness against the Notre Dame team that got dismantled by Virginia the other day. I thought Coach K paid... Notre Dame a very nice compliment this morning. He said he told his team, Notre Dame's not a team, it's a program. They have values, they have a culture, they will compete. And they did. Notre Dame's just shorthanded. There are too many injuries that they've had to deal with. It's just been too difficult to keep uh, uh, anything consistent. And when you don't have, when you don't have your full complement of players, you know, you're going to have results like this. Safe travels to Austin. Thank you. Looking we forward look to forward it. forward to seeing you in Blacksburg. Next Monday night, the Hokies and the Louisville Cardinals. For Jay Billis, Allison Williams, and our crew, Sean McDonough saying so long from South Bend. Dress warm here the next few days, everybody. Let's send you back to the studio. Here's Adnan.